Hey, Connor here from the Everything Farm, and today I want to talk about potassium deficiency in tomatoes. It's a common problem uh, for indoor tomatoes, uh, especially uh, in the Northeast. And the clearest indication of it is in the leaves, and it has a very specific look to it. And the edges, you know, could be a bit brown right on the edges, and then there'll be like some yellow in the uh, margins here. Uh, and then it can actually go purple later on. And this can happen for a few different reasons, right? It could happen because your soil just doesn't have potassium, but that's usually not quite the case. It means that the soil isn't very high in potassium, and then environmental factors will stop the plant from taking it up. And the most common would be temperature. So if the temperature drops below like 60 degrees or gets above 90 degrees, then the plant will completely stop taking up potassium and you can start to have that problem. And even if your soil has, has enough of it, and especially if your soil is borderline, and mine's a, you know, very borderline on potassium, it's the thing I'm always uh, working on balancing. The other thing that potassium can cause if, if there's the uptake isn't happening, if you've ever had tomatoes that are blotchy that don't ripen evenly. Potassium is usually the cause or can be a big cause of blotchy ripening tomatoes if it's not ripening evenly. evenly. So, if that, so if the temperature change, that extreme temperature happens at the time that the tomatoes are ripening, then that's what you'll see. Another thing is waterlogged soil. If your soil is very, very waterlogged, then that will cause uh, tomatoes to not take up potassium and not move in the soil. So how do you fix it? Well, if it's your soil, then you have to fix your soil first. But usually that's not the case, right? Hopefully you've been, you know, especially if you're growing greenhouse tomatoes, you've probably sorted that out. So how do you solve it today? Well, you want to get to the temperature problem quickly. So that may either be with some shade cloth to uh, reduce that fluctuation so you don't get above 90 degrees. Uh, fans, that's going to help. Um, and if you, a heater to make sure if it's just getting too cold in there. And then to add the potassium, the best way I find is liquid seaweed. And this isn't the fish seaweed. Right, there's mostly seaweed comes in like the seaweed fish combination, and that's going to make your house smell like absolute nightmare. But the the seaweed is fine; it doesn't smell like anything, and it actually comes in a powdered form that you just mix with water, and it's very easy to mix. It dilutes really, really quickly. Uh, you can also send it in drip. But for a real shot of potassium, it's nice to just spray them with that. Uh, it's like a weak seaweed solution. So for the powdered stuff, at least the stuff I use, it's just like an ounce per gallon. So it doesn't take a lot. And then you can spray just once a week uh, on all the leaf surfaces. Because you, you don't want to do it on a really, really sunny day. So you want to do it you know, in the evening or when it's overcast. Because anytime you spray tomatoes, there's always a chance of burning the leaves uh, by putting something on there and then having the sun hit it. And those little droplets become magnifying glass. Yeah, so, you know, sometimes with outdoor tomatoes, you'll see like brown spots on a plant. And that could actually be, you know, dew or rain, early rain with the sun coming out and burning the plant. So uh, make sure it's a weak solution and do it on an overcast day. And that will help. And then you'll start seeing, you know, nice green foliage again. And then maybe start adding it to your drip line. But tomatoes really like to take potassium in through the leaves. All right, so hopefully that'll help and uh, help solve that one issue.